What I saw this week from AEW felt more of what I would expect from a regular episode of Dynamite. Not throwing as many gimmicks or big deal things up against the wall. You know, more like regular kind of BAU business as usual stuff. Which means it had some good stuff, had some bad stuff. You know, I, I saw some of the reactions to it online predictably. Felt really extreme. What another phenomenal or awesome show. It's like, man, you cannot keep saying that every single week because nothing can live up to that expectation. You're ultimately just setting yourself up for failure. You have to be realistic sometimes. There'll be good. Mid, if you will. Bad. Eh. Pretty good. Great. Awesome. And you're in that whole range. And yes, even almighty AEW is going to do that. This one was just... An okay, good show. Certainly had some things that I questioned, like Adam Cole wrestling on the show is not a question to me. That's something you should do. Try to establish him with the new crowd, even though I know everybody knows who he is, but just humor me for a second. Kazarian, even as an opponent, I guess is okay, even though what is Kazarian hunting if he's always losing? Um, but there's no real beef here. Um, in terms of between these two, honestly, you know, like it's just a random match that the neckbeards could geek out for for 10 minutes. Uh, Adam Cole wins, and that's cool. I just would not have opened the show with this, personally. It didn't feel like it was an important enough match, even with Adam Cole in it, to open. And that was kind of a theme to me throughout the night, like, I'm all for Tony Khan doing and trying different things from a formatting standpoint, trying not to stick to the old traditional tropes of put one featured main thing in segment one, then you put one featured main thing between segments four or five, or mostly in segment five, which is the beginning of the second hour, uh, the mid-card main event, as Triple T used to call it, and then you got segment eight, the main event, you know, that's a big thing too. I'm okay with sometimes you shake shit up, and sometimes you... Mix up the formula. Sometimes, though, yeah, you got to have an understanding of what's going to resonate or connect the best with the crowd or what most closely ties into your big Arthur Ashe stadium show next week. And this really wasn't it. I'm sorry it wasn't. Apparently, Fuego Del Sol has got his money from AEW, and now he's buying a car. These kids, they get a little money, and it burns a hole in their pocket. And now he sits there and he wants to challenge Miro again. And he's going to put his car on the line. And why, when I was watching Fuego Del Sol, did he remind me of Hurricane Helms doing a Rey Mysterio impression? Like, go back and watch it. Listen to it. You'll see what the hell I'm talking about. One of the segments that I thought should have been in a featured spot on this week's show was MJF and him talking to Brian Pillman Sr. Like, when he sat there and looked up at the crowd, I said, nah, he's going to look down. He's going to look down. He did. It was phenomenal. You know, Ed, you're building something here between these two guys. I know they're scheduled to have a match next week. Fuck that. Fuck a match. Do something to build the heat. Do something where a match doesn't even start. Do something where you have a quick DQ. Like, not everything needs to be some type of drawn-out match. Not everything needs to have a decisive result. And if you feel like you have a little bit of something here, and part of the purpose of this program is to give a reason for MJF to continue to get some heat. Meanwhile, you're trying to elevate somebody like Brian Pillman Jr. There is no reason to have any type of clear, decisive result right now. So I'd rather they not have a clear-cut, straight-up match next week. Especially when I look at Pillman Jr.'s interview with JR, I thought it was pretty good. I thought he came across very well there. Um... I wouldn't say he necessarily has this daddy spark. Like, that didn't translate from one generation to the next. But you were given the young man an opportunity. I feel like he's doing well with it in relation to his abilities. So no reason to have to sit there and rock the world or anything like that. And I was really surprised when they were doing the interview with uh, the Jurassic Express and Christian that Jungle Boy actually spoke. He said something. See, Jack Perry, it's not so bad. Say it a little bit at a time. Words. It's okay. It's okay. But I do want to point out again, at least these guys are on TV. Fucking Lucha Brothers are nowhere to be found on Dynamite again. Anyways. Uh, FTR, Russell, Dante Martin, and Matt Seidel. And I barely remember this match. I'm sorry. I know I'm recording this the next day. 
I took no notes on anything that happened. It was just a match. It was just there. Sorry. I'm still trying to figure out Malachi Black and what this whole Phantom of the Neckbeards gimmick is. Uh, maybe that is the gimmick. I don't know. But, yeah, it's not connecting with me. The random-ass Rosario, Rosario Dawson sighting. Like, obviously, she looks great. Fuck Cory Booker. Um... But yeah, that was pretty random. I mean, I understand why they did it, plugging the TBS shit with Cody. You know, and Cody comes back in his dumbass looking red suit and everything else. When when is this company, when is Cody going to get the memo? Like even the dorks there in attendance live may have been trying to cheer him a little bit or get behind him, but everything about him points to heel. There are so many founder tendencies, so many founder elements. You bring somebody new in. They got to work with one of the founders. Random ass, weird ass celebrity involvement by Rosario Dawson. Oh, she's just going to come over the barrier and she's going to attack Malachi Black and nobody's going to do anything about it and this is just going to be a fucking thing? That's very founder-like. Very founder-like. The whole notion of you're going to cheer Cody Rhodes because he has to overcome obstacles. Motherfucker, he is the obstacle. He's on that Cena shit. Some A-E-W-W-E crap right there. And then you're wasting like 60 bucks worth of beer in the crowd, you jackals. I don't know. Not, not digging the vibe here. Just really weird. I think the dynamics are off. I think the players are in the wrong position. That's just me. And I'm sure a lot of you don't care. And it is what it is. The Dan Lambert and America Top Team stuff, in, in a bubble... It's nice to actually hear somebody be able to cut an effective promo for a couple of minutes on Dynamite every week. I give it that. I still look at this whole America Top Team thing and I say, of all the people, why is it Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky? It's just the fit is really weird. It's really odd. Now, to me, if you're bringing in a guy from a shoot fighting world, it would certainly make sense if you replace Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page with Jake Hager and Anthony Agogo. Could you see how that would make more sense? That would add more gravitas to this? And then you could really go and really go after the fake looking fucking aspects of AEW. Hey, you're going to jump from here and do all this crap. Then you're going to kick out at two. Like that pops me a little bit, but at some point in time, you've got to have a purpose or a point to why you're doing this. Other than to just demonstrate how Dan Lambert can cut a better promo than 98% of your roster. Um, but... Really odd to see Jericho and Hager come out to confront him. You know, like, inner circle's got beef, I guess. Like, you already have enough people you're trying to force on the show every week. Why are we doing more of this? Uh, but like I said, this top team thing with Dan Lambert, if you had legit, legit, legit fighters, wrestlers, whatever you want to call it, the Hagers and the Agogos of the world, like, Hager's had success in the MMA world. Agogo's literally an Olympic medalist boxer. Like it carries more weight. It could be a platform to elevate both of those guys. Apparently, the gun club wants Poet's ass. And you know what? Fuck it. I'm down for it. This gives me some AEWTNA <laughs> type of vibes. If you remember <laughs> BG James. <laughs> remember Road Dog and Billy Gunn? Had a feud in TNA. That's what this reminds me of a little bit. I am fucking here for it. Yes. Um, I know some of you got pissy at me last night when I said Layla Hirsch versus Jade Cargill should be a squash match. Not everything needs to be a squash match with her. It's not WWE. They do that shit. Well, the point I'm getting at here is accentuate the positives and hide the fucking negatives. Layla is damn near a freaking midget. And in comparison to Jade Cargill, she looks like one. She should not be getting in a bunch of shit. She should not be immediately taking Jade Cargill, who you're trying to build up into this, you know, comic book character monster like superstar. She shouldn't be immediately taking her down. It shouldn't be like a 50 50 battle where they're both getting their shit in. That's dumb. You don't do that. It doesn't help either of them get over. I don't care if Layla's in her damn hometown. There's even more reason to have Jade Cargill squash the shit out of her. Like in the long term scheme of things, Jade Cargill is somebody you're going to make money with. Layla Hirsch is not. She's a novelty, a gimmick. She's the chick version of Marco Stunt, period. Who are you going to invest more in? Like, don't let her sit there and take Jade down multiple times. 
Because if anything, that's exposing Jade, who's still green, who is still learning. Like, you don't do that. Just dumb, 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 dumb. I will say I was being a little dumb last night because I was like, CM Punk on commentary, why the hell are we doing this? Like, not even thinking at my old age. Oh, just because of, they had a, he had a beef with the Team Taz last week, and then that's his way of coming at Team Taz this week. Oh, I, I, yeah, you know what? Fuck it. Seeing Hook and Powerhouse Hobbs fuck up CM Punk. I'm cool with it. I'm not even going to knock that. I was down for it last week. I still remain down for it this week. I do. I do. I'm cool. It's giving Powerhouse Hobbs some shine, and I'm certainly down for that. Uh, Andrade, look. Yeah, some of y'all were probably pissed at me, certainly, when I said there are more similarities and differences between AEW and WWE. That is absolutely the case here. Andrade, new scenery, same shit. Don't really know what to do with them. Like, something is just off. You cannot logically look at me and tell me that you feel like AEW has done a great job with Andrade. They have not. Stop it. There are other people they have done very well with. This is not one of them. It is a reminder of the importance of just because you bring somebody in doesn't automatically mean that it's going to make a difference. Uh, Sean Spears versus Darby Allen. Why is Sean Spears a thing? Why does he matter? Why does he get spots like this if he's never going to win anything big? But what matters more, what matters more, obviously, is uh, the, the spot with wiping the face paint off of Darby Allen and then wiping the face paint off of Sting. That's what FTR did. <laughs> if, if the black and white face paint is gone, Sting. <laughs> you could always go with Joker Sting. <laughs> and what better way to build up, avoid the distraction of FTR, get to the real business at hand that is doing your own business, lay down the challenge as <laughs> Joker Sting. Isn't Bow for Glory in like Las Vegas or something? If it is, if it isn't, it doesn't make a fucking difference. It's perfect. Sting for Joker Sting at that versus CM Punk. Bound for glory. I've got the pen. Sign the contract, fellas. It's what we want. It's what we need. It's what we need. Here's your opportunity, Sting. Come back as a Joker. Anyways, moving on. Uh, when I talk about the format of some of the different things that happen to show at random times, really weird that the thing is going to be the headline main attraction of your Arthur Ashe show next week, especially Wednesday's episode of Dynamite, is going to be Kenny Omega versus Brian Danielson for the AEW World Championship. This is going to be Danielson's first match in AEW. For a lot of the fans that you're appealing to, this is a dream matchup, especially for the title. They've been looking forward to it for months, and you don't even have this segment main event the fucking show? I'm sorry, that was dumb. Can't always hit home runs, but he sure struck out here. I will say, though, this was the best I've ever seen Kenny Omega look as a champ. And I mean that. Like, we got past some of the dorky, lame, inside joke, elite shit. And Kenny Omega got serious for a moment, even with the stupid color hair and everything else. Like, when Danielson challenged him, he didn't play games. He didn't, like, relatively quickly turned around and accepted the challenge. And, like, he could feel the moment. And it looked like Omega was a little taller than him, like he... Swolled up on him, he buffed up on him a little bit. You know, like, Kenny Omega came across for the first time in a long time like a dude that had some big dick energy. And out of your world champion, you want to see that. Now, to be clear, he should absolutely be losing this title to Brian Danielson at the Arthur Ashe show. That is the only possible justification. Oh, Hangman Page, Hangman Page ain't fucking there. Period. He took time off. Move on. May even mean more if he wins it from Danielson at some point in time. But reality is, mm -mm. like this should be your big moment. You got to put that title on Danielson. You've got to. Because otherwise, what the hell are you bringing these big names in if you're not going to do something extreme with somebody? You're not going to hurt Omega. Might even help Omega, frankly. But at this moment... Like, this was the first time I looked at Kenny Omega as a world champion, and I said, this dude kind of felt like a world champion. Oh, you think you're going to walk into my house and fucking challenge me? You think you're better than me? Nah, bitch. That's not how I play. I like that. I like the segment. I hated the fact that we didn't close the show with it, because we had to close the show with Moxley and Kingston versus 2.0. I can't imagine 2.0 main eventing a, 
a fucking episode of Dynamite when they have nothing to do of substance with next week's slate of action. That's just dumb. I understand the Suzuki shit was trending last week and you were trying to play off of that. You were trying to give the fans what they wanted. But you could have done this on another segment. The Suzuki shit is not the biggest thing going into the damn Arthur Ashe show, next week's action. It's just not. It should not be the thing that you're closing off. It should not be your big send-off to the next stuff that's happening next week. Just weird choices in some of the ways that I saw Tony Khan format the show. I personally would have done differently. There was certainly some really good shit on the show. Like the Danielson Omega face-off was really good, and I thought Kenny Omega looked great here. Yeah, I know I'm saying it. You're damn right I do. Hey, I don't always bury Kenny Omega. I hate the Bucks of Suck and Cody Rhodes way more than I hate Kenny Omega. If you go back and watch the history of me on this channel and these videos, you know that's true. There are moments I actually praise Kenny Omega, and this is going to be one of them. I always love seeing Jade Cargill. I don't like seeing the fact that she's being brought down uh, to mat level multiple times, being taken off of her feet. That's not how you accentuate her positives and maximize her strengths. That's just dumb match structure. That's dumb booking. And we need to call that out as such. The MJF Pillman Jr. segment was fucking phenomenal. Again, like it was great. Um, so there were good things on this show. I just thought when I look at this show, it represents some of the things that irritate me about wrestling today. Like the 50-50 booking, everybody gets shit in. You know, you're featuring people because you want to feature people because you feel bad or whatever. You're not building up to the things that matter or make the most sense. Um, and then the formatting was just, just kind of off to me this week. So I know in terms of the ratings, it did an okay number this week. I think it was like 1.18 million viewers and just barely topped Raw in the key demo. Um, but the 1.8 number is solid. Like if that was the BAU standard of what they do when they're not doing a bunch of gimmicks or giving away a bunch of shit on TV, like if 1.18 was their overall viewership standard and somewhere around 0.45 was their performance in the 1849 demo, like, it's a pretty good baseline for AEW. And that should be something that you're pleased with and then want to see improve. Don't get too caught up in the going up against Raw bullshit because AEW Dynamite is not going up against Monday Night Football, which siphons away millions of viewers, especially in the key demos. I think it's not a level playing field right now. That's just reality. That's a fact. Um, focus on your own stuff and keep doing what you're doing. And we'll find out ways to improve and get even better.